Okay, here's a commercially important uh, light bulb in the LED replacement market. Uh, it's a 100 watt equivalency, uh, 1500 lumens, but most importantly, uh, under a magic price point, it's uh, under $10. Okay, I saw the top off, obviously, and this is just a bit of plastic which uh, diffuses the light. Looking downwards, you can see an array of LEDs, uh, the yellow uh, phosphor they're quite clearly showing. Let me uh, zoom into a whole series of photographs to uh, look at some of the interesting uh, things you can tell. Uh, the first one is uh, down here, you can uh, get a date code, it's uh, the October 24th, 2014, and that's the design date of the circuit board. Now it's interesting, I just picked up this uh, bulb in uh, January 2016. Um, now I haven't been monitoring the LED market too closely lately, but uh, I don't think this bulb has been out that long, so I was wondering if this design actually sat up for a while at uh, Philips before they actually got it to market, whether they were waiting for more cost-effective LEDs or uh, some other business reasons had delayed them, but that design date seems uh, earlier than I would have expected. Um, some interesting uh, soldering, you can take a look here, I'll just insert the solder for these leads here. They're obviously soldered by hand, you can see the rosin uh, residue is still uh, present. Um, that's always a weak point in an electronic assembly when you ever have somebody doing hand assembly. Um, if you look at the actual LEDs though, uh, they get kind of interesting. The uh, solder paste wasn't uh, pasted all the way across the pad, you can see they have the solder mask. Uh, then uh, the copper of course is the uh, conductive pad and there's a silver bit to solder. Uh, and normally you'd want to paste the solder all into the pad so the pad would get all the solder. So for some reason they pinch printed out a very stingy amount of solder and I don't know if that was to uh, force the LEDs to be more coplanar. Okay, so here's the emitter array. Uh, actually before I just uh, knocked it off I measured it. It's a fairly high voltage, uh, 90 volts almost, so not too surprising. Quite a few LEDs sitting there. And if you zoom into the package here you can actually see there's uh, two bond wires per LED, so a fairly significant array. Uh, there's a metal cap, also distorted because I just simply uh, pried it off. And then looking down, of course, the uh, AC to DC converter sitting inside this housing here. Uh, there's no uh, potting compound in this assembly. It's sort of consistent with uh, Philips' approach or these uh, basic bulbs. They uh, save some money there. Uh, they have a thermal gradient uh, hazard and, of course, a potential ac uh, acoustic uh, problem as well. They might buzz a bit more, but, of course, that allows them to lower the assembly price. Uh, let me uh, see if I can get the circuit board out and we'll uh, look at the parts on it. Okay, here's the circuit board that's inside the assembly there. It's a really straightforward uh, design. Uh, first thing to look at is the uh, PCB technology. You can see there's traces only on one side, single-sided assembly. Uh, this is fiberglass, it's not phenolics. It's a slightly better grade of circuit board uh, than bottom of the barrel, but uh, still a very inexpensive process note. Makes sense, of course, when you're trying to sell something for such a small amount of money. Uh, Single-sided board means there's no uh, via barrel, so the solder joints tend to be slightly less reliable. Uh, if you were to come up to uh, some text that's just hidden under these wires here, I'll inset the photograph a little bit clearer. It says a uh, basic bulb. I think that was the internal engineering program name when they were doing these designs. I can't seem to use, see that in the uh, marketing literature, but uh, sort of confirmation though that this was an attempt to build, of course, a really straightforward uh, LED light bulb. The design topology is surprisingly simple. It's actually just a, an NPN transistor. There's no sort of complicated uh, integrated circuit. It's a uh, 4520. Uh, but just backing up a little bit, I did a partial tracing of the schematic and uh, it's kind of straightforward. Uh, coming into the power here, there's a fuse and then there's an EMI suppression component here, a choke. And then down over here is a, a full wave rectifier. So you end up with like a high DC voltage. That's a very common building block in an LED light bulb. Uh, coming up here, there's an output. Uh, there's about 80 volts uh, coming through the output uh, DC. The uh, diodes, of course, be here as well. So you get the high DC voltage comes in. Diode provides a path for the uh, main NPN transistor. Uh, there's a, a coil here, and uh, there's an interesting a series of resistors here. It's an interesting approach. Uh, little resistors are so cheap, actually. It's often a very intelligent just to place a whole bunch of them in parallel rather than selecting a larger, higher wattage single unit. Uh, let me insert also a photograph here so it's a little bit clearer that these are actually just arrays of parallel transistors. Um, interesting design approach. A transformer here, and there's a tap that comes back, and there's some sort of feedback loop. I haven't fully traced it out, but uh, it doesn't look very sophisticated, and uh, there's an RC relaxation oscillator or something like that uh, going on in the topology. Uh, the capacitor here is, of course, an electrolytic. Uh, it is rated to uh, 85 degrees centigrade. Uh, pardon me, 105 degrees centigrade. So this is a flicker test. This is a solar cell and the light bulb. 
to touch the solar cell is uh, an oscilloscope. And this output gives me some sense as to whether there's any flicker. This is the baseline here. It's DC coupled. You can see a little fuzz in the trace, but actually it's very, very small. And uh, it's confirmation this bulb actually has a very little flicker. Uh, the second thing I can do is actually put the camera right back onto the bulb and look for an, an aliasing or a banding. Um, and it's really not uh, that visible in this bulb. So uh, this bulb has excellent flicker performance, uh, virtually in, undetectable. Let's talk about light distribution pattern. Uh, here's what's known as a polar graph. I record the light intensity in 10 degree increments. And the greater the number from the center here to outwards it indicates a greater uh, output of light. I've only mapped just a small portion of the quadrant here because I suspect the bulb will be fairly symmetric. Um, and uh, import those numbers into uh, Excel and it prints out a nice graph for me. So uh, as you can see, of course, pointing out this way, there's very little light as you, of course, would expect. But uh, unfortunately, the slides, there's uh, actually not a great amount of light. Uh, tremendous uh, sort of bias pointing downwards. Not a huge surprise because, of course, the emitter uh, in this bulb is sort of sitting very flat like this. So it's very hard for me to push light out sideways. Uh, there certainly is better emulations uh, out there of the light pattern of an old incandescent. Uh, however, of course, the observation here for $10, you're getting a tremendous number of lumens, uh, 1,500 lumens. And uh, certainly I've been waiting for this bulb. I have a number of 100 watt uh, CFLs that have been waiting to be uh, replaced with a, a bulb like this.